Alrighty, hey guys, we are back for a another ending, the final ending, the last one, only one left, one more to go. <laughs> I'm so excited, but also, I did take like several days off after that last one, I ended up recording that entire ending, which was like over two hours long for me to get through it in novel mode. Uh, I did it all in all in one night. Which, I mean, isn't that big of a session for me to normally play games, but recording and everything, it was, uh, it was a lot more than I normally record, so, and that's just even counting my, my reactions and this, you know, usually like the, well, anyway, well, we won't get into that, <laughs> uh, ramble, let's, uh, let's jump, first of all, before we even look at what we need to do, let's jump out of here, I'm assuming the fourth and fifth door is gonna be where we're gonna start. So we'll jump there, we can skip anyway, but just so we can get out of that, uh, that rumbling beginning part, right? So, all right. So, first of all, uh, kind of like we did with the last ending, my friend has set me up with the, the doors we have to go through, um, and then also some hints as to what I have to do in those doors to trigger the true ending, so. I came up with a quick little theory, uh, before I look at what doors we actually have to do. Um, I'm thinking for this option, we're gonna have the... I'm guessing the four door, because we had the, uh, basically process of elimination. I don't really have good reasons for this. But we had the four door, or the five door was what we went through last time for the ending right before this. So I'm gonna guess we go through the four door. Either that or it doesn't matter what door, one of those two. And then we're going to get to this choice here, where we are going to have to pick between the 3, 7, and 8 door. And we went through the 8 door last time, so I'm going to say 4, 7, and then once we get through the 7 door, we're going to come down here and we're going to have this option between 1, 6, and 2. And we've, we've only ever done the forced picking the 2 door. Because when you pick, when you go through the three door, it forces you to go through the two door afterward. So I think this time I'm gonna actually pick the two door when I get the option when we're doing that paper uh, test of everyone writing down what door they want to go through, and then it gives me a chance to um, pick between the the doors. Or I pick two there, and I think that's how you get down this gap here. Um. I just, I still don't know where the, the mysterious ending is going to be, you know? Like, there's no spot on this, uh, on this tree for it, so that'll be interesting. So that's my theory. Uh, it's nothing too complex. I, I'm just basically going off what we didn't do in the last ending, and then based off this being still blocked off, assuming that going through the two door is how you, you bridge this little gap here that we haven't done yet, but anyway... Um, let's actually take a look here now and see. So ending true, it is four, seven, and then one. Okay. So four, seven, and one. I was almost right. Uh, it's, uh, I thought it was four, seven, and then two. Man, so you just never have to pick that two door afterwards, right? That's one thing we never did. Interesting. Um... Other than when you go through the, uh, the three door. And it forces you into the two, of course. But, yeah. Alright, so, now what we're gonna do is similarly to last time. We are gonna figure out what we have to do in order to, um... What we have to do in order to trigger the ending. Now, we have an introductory... Uh, from my friend here that I'll read real- I think I can read that before I go for the hint number one, so. Um, after reaching the safe ending, it should be somewhat obvious now where you must go. The solution to reaching this ending is way more clear-cut than your uh, past extra requisites. So I'll be unable to provide any minor hint- oh, <laughs> he says that and then he actually gives minor hints anyway. Uh, but there, he had a hard time coming up with them. Um, let's see, so... 
<laughs> I like how he says that it should be somewhat obvious where you must go, and I'm just like, huh? <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I still don't know... Okay, so we're... So, four-door. What was through the four-door? Four-door was... Not the five-door, it was the other one. <laughs> okay. Uh... Ah, uh, shoot, what was what was the four-door puzzles? I'm trying to remember. Actually, I can probably look at the names. I've already done... Whoops. I did not mean to do that. I thought we were finished with that topic. Uh, well, we're going to have a little bit of music going now. Um, what I can do is I can look at the names of the escape rooms. Uh, first Class Cabin, and then Casino. That was... That was the five, wasn't it? Okay, yeah. So we have second class cabins and kitchen. Okay, the kitchen. That was when I got frozen in. Okay. Man, that it's been a while, I feel like, since I've actually gone through, like, the puzzles in this room. Um, so assuming it's in a escape room again, I, I don't know. I don't know what I could have, like, not clicked on in the four door. Uh, seven would have been the, uh, that's eight, seven would have been here, which would have been the operating room. Really, the operating room was on its own? Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I can't think of anything I really, like, overlooked there either, or, like, anything I didn't use. And then as for the one door, which was this one over here, uh, we have the the chart room, and then the captain's quarter. I mean, the only thing I can think of from, I think it was the either the chart room or the captain's quarters, I think it was where we found the extra key card about going to the library, um, but we never ended up using it. So I feel like... It was the whole, like, Alice thing, and the key card, and, like, the the forest of knowledge, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I feel like that's gonna be the target of part of this ending, or else it was just left there for, like, nothing, you know? Um, but I don't know what I have to do to trigger it, so I guess I'm just at a complete loss, so let's just look at hint number one, shall we? Oh, I didn't mean to click out of that. Uh, perhaps it was something... You've not yet concluded. Okay, so... So, not yet concluded. I think that has to do with, like, the Alice thing, right? Um... But what do I have to do to trigger that to... To happen? Unless it's just going in that order. Unless it just has to do with going in 4, 7, and 1. But I feel like there's more to that. Let's go to hint 2. Uh, perhaps something somewhere ending abruptly. <laughs> um... <laughs> the funny thing is, is my my first thought was the the casket ending abruptly, um, but obviously we we already have like the the answer to that. But huh, perhaps something somewhere ending abruptly. I'm guessing he's not talking about the casket because I feel like the last ending concluded what was going on with that. So what else ended abruptly? And I'm trying to like tie it together with the whole like Alice thing. Um, me too dumb. Let's just go to hint three. I don't want to like spin here all day. Knock knock knock. Okay, so it is the casket. I was wrong. Um, interesting. Huh. So maybe something. I mean, maybe we have to go and get. Obviously, we have to go, I guess, in this ending, and we're gonna get Snake back. Hopefully, um, Clover lives this time, right? Um, but what do we have to do to trigger the ending is, like, the big question, right? Like, like, sure, I know that it has to, like, that, that hint tells me that I have to, uh, it has to involve the, uh, Snake and Casket thing. So we have to get back to that point, but yeah, let's just look at the uh, let's just look at the the answer, shall we? Um, because I don't really have, unfortunately, I don't really have any theories as to like what we have to do specifically. All right, so the answer is go back to the coffin ending, 
However, now you should be able to progress further than the first endings to be continued point. I'm fairly certain you can skip right to the coffin endpoint in the flowchart without doing the the flag slash door setup. However, I'd recommend going to the novel segment just before it. So long as it's on the branch to the to the coffin end. Just so you can have a slight recap as to what's going on and refresh your memory. Also, after you get a couple new dialogues past the to be continued point from ending one, take a quick peek at the flowchart and enjoy the ride. Oh boy. If for some reason you can't skip to the coffin branch in the flowchart, you'll need to follow ending one's flag requirement again. However, this seems very unlikely. But if so, I'd recommend just... Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, he's saying that... Damn, that's crazy. So I can skip straight there? So he's saying I can skip straight as long as it's gonna let me. I can skip straight to... He said the novel mode before it. But I guess... I don't know if going to the novel mode before it... Straight up is gonna... Um... Is that what this unlock means? Is there's like new shit there? Interesting. Um. I guess we'll, we'll try it. We'll just see what happens. We're either gonna get the axe ending or we're gonna get this. Alright, so. Let's, let's actually begin now, guys. Shall we? <laughs> um. Here, actually, I need to bring this up. Two. There we go. Alright, they stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit before turning left like a great backward right, L. Let's go. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the straightaway. He ran and ran and ran. At the end of the hallway was a door. That's the next door. Let's do this. He made straight for it. Wait, a piece of paper. What? Wait. He was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the floor. Was this the map, actually? He basically skidded to a halt. Is... He dropped down to his hands and knees and quickly tore the paper off of the floor. Map of the okay, ship's yeah, I do remember it. this. <laughs> What's wrong? Shut up, Ace. Ace, slightly slower by virtue of his advanced age, had finally caught up to Junpei. I found a map for this floor. I know, I know who you really are, Ace. Ugh. You sure Ace wouldn't snatch from the wall? He looked at it long enough to determine what it was and nodded. I see. With that, he began running again past Junpei. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> I should keep this, though. Junpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace. But something stopped him. Hey, uh, where's Clover? He turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Damn it. What the hell is she up to? Hmm. Oh wait, is this uh Junpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he'd come. As he stomped around the corner he saw her. Yeah, this was when she like filled her pockets or whatever, right? She took the uh she took like the bracelet and uh, in the accident she took the axe. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarter, her hand on the doorknob. Clover! Huh? As Junpei watched, she closed it, gently and quietly. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Yep, Clover had unconsciously put her hands over the pockets of her jacket as if to hide something. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um... This is... Hmm, I wonder... What the hell? Come on, we gotta hurry! With that, Clover ran straight past the somewhat confused Junpei. As she did, he caught a glimpse of her back. Uh-oh. Clover, what's that on your back? Oh, shit. Sticking up from her collar was something that looked like a big wind stick. stick. Oh boy, okay. Hey, Clover! What the hell's that thing on Shit. your back? Shit, I think we have the axe ending, right? She didn't respond. Is she in uh, okay guys, let's just, uh... I think this is the axe ending based off that. 
So I think I am gonna have to go through and do the trigger. Um Did he head Let's let's uh Let's speed through and see what we're about to get here. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is when they split up, and then they go and search. Yup, this is the axe ending. And then I just wait, right? And then she returns, and they're all dead. Yeah. Three. Okay. Seven. Um. But yeah. Shoot. Why? Okay. So that means we're gonna have to follow this. I think I'm gonna. Cut the. I think I'm just gonna cut the, uh, this part here where I get set up, and I'll bring you guys right back to this novel mode right before the, uh, the proper ending, okay? So I'll, I'll see you guys back then. Alright, guys, so we're back. Uh, what I decided to do is, my friend was saying, to just jump straight here. So we're just gonna go straight to the, uh, the coffin ending, and hopefully it'll be enough of a recap for me to get back in it. So the room fell silent. Junpei, Clover, and Seven had been left behind- oh shit. We're already at the left behind bit. Oh. Clover looked down at her hand and traced with her finger the faint blue veins that crisscrossed them. So... In this ending- this was the ending that Santa took off, right? And and so it's just the three of us left. I just want to make sure that I'm like all in the all in the know of like how like what everything that went down prior to this, right? Um, because uh, what happened to everyone else? Santa took off with Lotus, right? Man, does Lotus get, like, taken by everyone? I'm trying to remember how that all went down. <laughs> oh man, screw my memory. I don't know, part of me remembers him grabbing Clover, wasn't it? Shoot. <sighs> Alright. Seven shoved his arms into the front of his overalls and scratched his stomach. No one spoke. Silence made the air feel thick and oppressive. <sighs> yeah, I'm just trying to... I'm just wondering if I should actually go and do, like, everything leading up to this. Let me, uh, I'm gonna cut one more time, guys, and I'm gonna see what my friend thinks for me being here. Because, like, I almost... I almost think this is okay. But at the same time, I just need to make sure that I remember everything that happened, so I'll be right back, guys. Alright, guys, hopefully that's the last cut <laughs> I just had to make there. Uh, so, basically, I talked to my friend, he said I should just continue on from where we are now, and he just gave me a quick recap of what happened in the Santa ending, that way I can, you know, be on the same page as everyone else in the game. Because uh, I apparently am stupid and cannot remember simple things. <laughs> but, uh... But basically, this was the ending. Like I thought, it was the ending that Santa grabbed someone. I just, for some reason, completely tuned June out. It was June that got grabbed, and he obviously had the gun, and then uh, wanted Lotus to go with him so they could open the door. And Junpei was like, please just go, leave us behind. This was also the, the one where before Santa spoke up, Seven was gonna st uh, stay behind by himself in order to, uh, whatchamacallit, in order to sacrifice himself, you know, so that's something I wanted to note as well. So yeah, that's basically it, we're, we're basically caught up at that point, I just wanted to make sure I remembered the order of events that happened with, uh, with Santa leaving, and now I do, so now we can just continue, hopefully... 
we <laughs> watch and now we're gonna have the problem where we hit the to be continued and it doesn't actually do whatever is like supposed to be past it or whatnot but Desperate for something, anything to occupy his mind, Jinpei walked to the larger of the two nine doors. He stood in front of it and looked at the red. It red engaged. He moved to the smaller door. The red red vacant. The red red. The digital root of the remaining people was seven. If only we had a two! I wonder where we'd find one. There's no possible way for them to open a door with nine on it. Jinpei touched the surface of the door. June. Wait, so in this... I wonder how we get the code. Right? If we're not doing, like, the other, the whole, like, safe thing where we got the note from Clover in order to figure out about the wristband in order to get that code, that'll be interesting how we get the code this time. He thought about June, about Akane Kurashiki. Akane. <laughs> Akane. <laughs> what, what is wrong with me tonight? Was she safe? That was all that mattered to him. If she was alive, if she had escaped to this horrible boat... <sighs> That was what Junpei prayed for. Seven came up to him next, or came up next to him. He pulled off his hat, scratched his head, and sighed. So, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Seven opened his mouth to respond when. Yep. Knock, 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 knock. A noise echoed through the room. Someone was pounding on something vigorously. Wasn't, uh, it wasn't mechanical, it was certainly human. Jinpei and Seven looked at one another. What the hell is that? Shh, quiet! Clover motioned to Seven to be quiet. She put one finger on her lips and closed her eyes in concentration. Yes, the three of them listened, trying to determine where the sound was coming from. Get our snake back! Gonna be like an Alice zombie Could this time be... or some shit. Uh, hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for? For show? <laughs> Use force. You're telling me to force it open? I ain't gonna Just work. Shut up and try. Junpei and Seven grabbed hold of the coffin. They tried to get a good grip with what little purchase they could find and pulled with all their strength. <sighs> yep. Damn it! Man, it won't even budge. There was some sort of keypad attached to the coffin. Purpose would not have been difficult to determine. Uh, their eyes were almost immediately drawn. Not another to one. Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password, or it won't open? I think so. Knock, knock, knock. The noise wasn't stopping. In fact, it was getting louder. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. <laughs> Such a creepy way of putting it. Whoever or whatever's inside wants out. I know that. But how? <sighs> Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. Hmm. They couldn't even tell how many numbers the passcode needed Isn't to be. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. All right. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be anything near the coffin. Clover ran to examine the pews, and Seven investigated the desk, but they turned up nothing. Ugh, there's nothing here! Not making this easy, are they? The sound still wouldn't stop. It wasn't a noise that belonged in that room. <sighs> We're almost there, to the moment. What's the passcode? What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need... Something. Yep, here it is. Let's find out if I'm screwed again and need to actually go through all the shit to, to hit the trigger. The world blinked. Whoa. Okay, yep, that, that didn't happen. Suddenly there was a voice inside of Junpei's head. Wait, what? Wait, what? Truth had gone, truth had gone, truth had gone. Ah, uh, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. Wait, why did that pop in our head? Wait, what? What the hell what? was that? 
That voice. What? How do we have a voice in our head? Okay. Um, I was instructed to, uh, right after, where was that? Um... Do, 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 do. Take a quick peek at the flowchart after um, the other point. So let's look at the flowchart. Oh, okay. Well, that is a that is a lot of stuff. So I guess it was just that's what I was wondering. So there was just a lot of secret stuff hidden. All right, let's let's do this, guys. Let's friggin' do it. Get started. All right, we have a voice in our head, guys. Junpei was utterly and completely baffled. Me too, man. Huh? What? What's up? Seven and Clover ran over to him, but Junpei didn't know what to tell them. Huh? If he told them he'd heard a voice, they'd laugh, or worse, think he was going insane. So all he said was... Oh, <clears throat> nothing. What? He cleared his throat a little too loud and looked pointedly down at his bracelet. There were a pair of small buttons protruding from either side of it. Junpei, he pressed the buttons. Oh. Wait, what? He's just gonna solve it in his head? Like, I obviously remember... Um... I think it started with left, right? It would have been left, right, left, right, left, right. I think because it was, um... Shoot, the whole, like, riddle thing we had before that just popped in our head. Uh... Or wait, maybe it was right, left, right. Because the sinister hand was supposed to point us to our left hand, and then truth had gone. We narrowed it down to truth and gone, and then we narrowed, um... Truth and gone down to uh, right and left, right? And I think truth was the right hand, right? So it would have been right, left, right, left, right, left. I think I'm gonna go with that. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Interesting. So, like, he just solved that whole thing that quickly in his head? And didn't even, like... I mean, I guess he solved it in his head last time. We were just there for the ride. That was it. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Eight numbers blinked on and then off. What? Jimbei checked one last time. Yeah, one, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. I do, uh, uh, in, in one of my last videos when we first found this code, I added it up to see if it had a digital root of nine, and I did the math wrong. It still doesn't have a digital root of nine, but my friend was telling me that. Huh? I suck at math. I suck at mental math. Hey, what the hell were those numbers? Oh my gosh, are those... <sighs> Junpei didn't answer. He simply walked straight to the coffin. What the heck? He knelt down in front of the keypad, running over... We're like in some kind of... simulation bullshit. Why did that shit pop into our head? What the heck? Running over the numbers in his head so that he wouldn't forget. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Like, it's almost like what this whole game is about, uh, at least all, like, the little stories that they talk about before we continue. They always talked about this, like, telepathy of, like, people communicating things from distances when you're in, like, in emergency situations and in need and stuff like that, and, like, you know, we had those conversations of, like, someone looking at pictures and then someone in a different room trying to guess what pictures they're looking at and, and stuff like that. It's almost like this, like came to our heads through that telepathy kind of thing, but from who, I guess, is my other question, if it was supposed to be something like that, you know? Um, but, alright, let's uh, let's continue. I just wanted to mention the, the similarity to that. It was something I was thinking in my head, so I figured one, I should four, probably three, say it eight, out loud. Three, four, two, one. 
Yes. With trembling fingers, he punched them in. Behold! A snake! That was all of them. Watch the Sakami snake. There was a moment of complete silence. Then there was the sound of the coffin lid unlatching. Someone sat up out of it. Huh. No way! Wh why are you... <laughs> yep. It's Snake! Yes. Hello. Is that you, Clover? I apologize for <laughs> worrying you. Ah, oh, Snake! Snake! You? Why? Junpei? And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Nope. Just like Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Still, it was very much like Snake to, uh, to simply cut to the heart of the matter and ask. <laughs> Jeez. Junpei and Seven shared a wry smile. Clover's eyes were filled with tears. You're back! With a cry of joy, she leapt into Snake's arms. Aww. Gently now. My body's still a little weak. Oh, you're back! Clover looked like nothing so much as a lost child who had finally found her home. She cried and cried and cried. Aww. Her eyes were red, and her nose was running. She hiccuped and gasped, as if she were about to begin hyperventilating. It's like, thank god, Snake, you're back, or else this bitch was gonna kill us all with an axe! You're back! You're really here! Her voice was happy, almost desperate, as if she feared he would disappear again if she stopped talking to him. Tear after tremendous tear rolled its way down her face. Her small arm strained as she clutched Snake's body as tightly as she could. Perhaps she had to convince herself he was real. Perhaps she was worried he would be gone the moment she let go. Perhaps she simply didn't know what else to do. Oh, you're back! Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not oh. as though! You did! I really thought you were dead! Huh? Yep, he doesn't know that there was a, a body left behind of him. <sighs> Clover broke into sobs so great she could no longer talk. It was a touching reunion between brother and sister. Even though Jinpei knew they had little time, and every minute they waited was a minute they wasted, it felt cruel to pull them apart. Jinpei and Seven sat down on one of the pews waiting for Clover to calm down before explaining to Snake what had transpired. Sweet. We got the snake I back. See. I believe I understand things rather well now. Okay. Thank you. Jump cut to explaining. Nice. In the shower room, there is a dead body wearing my clothes. Because of that, you thought that I was dead. Correct? He had quickly and neatly summarized the events of several hours. Yeah. Jinpei nodded. You also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on you here, in this room. Do I have it straight? Well, the dead body in the captain's quarters is a surprise. Oh, it's so nice having Snake back again, even though we just had him back in the last ending, but this time he has no reason to throw himself in front of bullets like that, unless it's to protect, like, Clover or something, but... Sorry, there wasn't a good time to tell you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, shit, Seven didn't even know about that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I, was, I was too busy thinking about other things when he said, well, the dead body in the captain's quarters is a surprise. <laughs> oh, man, well, okay. I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery who did all this and why. Yeah. The corpse in the shower room that looked like me. I have a theory, and but... And the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in the way they were? I only have a theory because of the other... Uh, well, I don't know about the Captain Quarter. I'm not sure about that guy. But, um... Obviously, because of the the previous ending, I have an idea as to that reasoning. You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Mr. X. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes. But you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. 
I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. He was probably like drugged or something. I only just now woke up. Yeah. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Yeah. Where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on C deck. What happened? The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. Oh, the he got gassed again. Some sort of gas was thrown into the Damn, room. so it probably was Zero that did it, even though I was pretty sure already. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's <sighs> nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Hmm. Damn. Jinpei crossed his arms and thought. Why? Why did Zero make Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How would that benefit Zero? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? And I have no idea how I got the passcode for the coffin either. Truth had gone, truth had gone, yep. and truth had gone. Where did those words come from? Why did I feel compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet after hearing them? Oh my god, this is gonna be some like... Is this gonna be some meta ending <laughs> where, like, I'm the one delivering messages to Junpei to, through telepathy or some shit, like, the player themselves, like, through the game? <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I was like, when he's like, where did those words come from? I was like, maybe, and why did I feel, I think the key thing was, why did I feel compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet? And I was just thinking when I'm the one that told him, like, the buttons, so did he, like... So he felt compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet. Does that mean that he didn't even figure out the truth had gone puzzle? I wonder if this is going to go to like some kind of meta thing, because if he didn't figure out the truth had gone like riddle, then he was just compelled to hit those buttons. I don't know. Interesting. Seven had asked him about it while they waited for Clover to finish crying. <laughs> he had, he'd had no answer for him then and he still didn't. All I know is... My fingers moved on their own. It was like I did it subconsciously. Oh my god. Is it actually gonna go to something like that? Oh, uh, this is gonna hurt my head. What the hell does any of it mean? His mind was a maelstrom of mysteries, clues, theories, and more mysteries. He could barely think. That's me right now. Also, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is Ew. danger. And... and... someone did actually die. A girl. Her name was... Yeah, she never said the name. ...experiment conducted on this same ship nine years ago, and a girl had died during it. Morphogenetic field theory. Yep. The two murders. Switching clothes. Piecing no things game. together. And whatever strange thing was happening to Junpei himself. The maelstrom in his head spat out words and ideas that disappeared back into it almost as soon as he grasped them. <sighs> But as he struggled through them, Junpei began to realize something. There was something that tied all of them together. And the point connecting the dots... Zero. Yep. He's the ringleader. The person who trapped nine of us on this sinking ship. Zero should know everything. If we can uncover Zero's identity, all of our questions will be answered. <sighs> who was Zero? Junpei had the beginnings of a theory. If he could only test it. Or perhaps... At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher the details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Alright, hold on, wait, what? We had the beginnings of a theory, if he could only test it, or perhaps, okay. Oh. Um, I was like thinking about something else right there when I read that, and just like completely spaced out what I even read. <laughs> um... I was thinking about the fact that one thing that never mentioned was, did Ace go with them? 
I'm guessing he must have, right? Um, if they wanted to go through a nine door, they had uh, June, which was six, Santa, which makes nine, Lotus, which makes. Uh... Wait. What happened in Ace in this run through? Right? Because if if they equal nine plus Lotus. Wait, no, maybe they did. Because that would be, that'd be 17. Yeah, okay, Ace must have went with them. Okay, my bad, sorry. But when I went through the recap before, I was like, yeah, like, Santa, Lotus, and June. And uh, either I just misread my friend saying that, or we never talked about Ace. And I just thought for a second, like, it just dawned on me. I was like, wait, where the hell's Ace? Because of, of that. But he must have went with them through the, the Santa ending stuff that happened. Anyway, okay. Just wanted to make sure I had all my ducks in a row before we get going. Junpei, it was 4.30 the last time you checked the clock, yes? That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Yeah. Hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? Isn't that obvious? Through the other number nine door. Yep, they equal oh, nine now. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. With Snake, we can open the door. Yep, yep. Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out. <laughs> As they snipe back and forth, Junpei glanced at Snake's left hand. He was wearing a bracelet with a two on it. Come on, you gotta tell me these things! I, uh, assumed you'd figured it out. <sighs> Forget it, let's just get going. Seven stomped off toward the smaller number nine door. Over Snake and Junpei followed. Alright, Seven quickly laid his hand on the red, and asterisk appeared on the screen. Junpei and the others followed suit and laid their hands on the scanner panel. Soon, there were four asterisks on the screen. Seven glanced at them, then laid his hand on the lever of the red. All right. You guys ready to go? Yes. All right. God. Junpei paused for a moment. Not yet. Oh, shit. Wait, what? Huh? Before we go in, I'd like to check something. You want to check something? Yeah, but before I do, Seven, could you pull the lever? Huh. I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need. Just do it, all right? Interesting. Why does he say th the like that? Opens, don't go in yet, okay? <clears throat> Please, this is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Huh. Junpei looked directly into Seven's eyes. The older man looked back for a moment, then nodded. Fine. All right. Okay, the door opened. Seven pulled down a lever and door nine creaked open. Then they waited. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, and it's shut. After nine seconds, the door closed. <sighs> Alright. That means the four of us can go into door nine. What so was he thinking? It's obvious. Obvious. Yeah. You're right. It is. My only thought is something that I talked about during the ace ending that we had last time was the 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 fake snake must have had a bracelet, right? That had a two on it in order for ace to be able to open that door properly. Um, which means they didn't take the bracelet off ace, or, I mean, uh, off snake. When they did it, that, that means zero must have put an extra bracelet on... The other, the fake, the Mr. X, you know? Now, what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Uh. Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? For a moment, Clover looked surprised, but she recovered quickly and uh, stuck her tongue out at Junpei. <laughs> <laughs> so you did know I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. <laughs> yep. She reached into one of the pockets of her voluminous jacket and produced a bracelet. Junpei took it from her and turned to Seven. This was on the left hand of the corpse in the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Just to make this a little yeah, easier this was to talk the about, one that we uh, found out. The guy we found dead in the captain's quarters. Uh, cap. Cap. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over him like that. Um, the. This was the bracelet that was a six before, right? In the last ending? So is it gonna be the same? And I should be able to open door nine with just me, Clover, and his bracelet. 
Wait, why? Wait, what? Oh, wait. Yeah, because that would be, uh... That would be five, four, and zero. Okay. God damn it. So the big question is, if Cap is the mastermind... There was like game, a... <laughs> would he really put one of these bracelets on? There was like a brief moment. I, I have this whole like paranoid like thinking that this is going to go into like a meta kind of thing. It's probably not. Or I don't know. I, I don't want to get myself too like amped up into that theory. But I, I started thinking that when he said then we should be able to open the door was just Clover and his bracelet was immediately after I said that that bracelet should be a six, right? If it's the same. And then Junpei said that, so I was gonna be like, oh my god, did he just, like, factor in? Like, did he already somehow know it was a six? But no, that math doesn't work out, so never mind. Okay. Anyway, let's just give it a shot. Clover, give me your hand. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Now the captain's bracelet. And pull the lever. However, error, yep, the door didn't open. The reds display red error. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? That is not zero. The bracelet has to be on your wrist in order for it to work? No. Nope. No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? Yeah. Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Yep, yep. Hmm. Seven waved his bracelet in front of the scanner panel. Sure enough, a single asterisk appeared on the red. Huh. Looks like you're right. See? So what does that mean? There's only one possibility. That bracelet isn't the number zero. Yep. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Then what number is it? Let's find out. Junpei, scan the bracelets with this combination. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um... What would be the way to make it be nine? If if the captain is six like it was before, um, that would mean the other number would have to be either three, which we can't do that with our numbers, uh, or it would have to be, um, what would that be? Uh, that would be 12, right? 12 would make 18, which would make 9 as a digital root. So to get 12, we need, um... We need Junpei and 7, right? Junpei, 7, and Cap. Which would be 5 and 7 would be 12. Let's try 7, me, and Cap. Yeah. Let's see if it's the same as before. Wait, what? If this combination opens the door, then Cap's bracelet is okay. Six. Yeah, 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 we're good. Yep, it's still six. Okay. Hey, it opened. Had the door opened. What? Why? What does that mean? It means that June is zero because bracelet six is the zero. <laughs> it's a clue. Well, Seven and Clover seemed rather shaken. As I turned to look at Junpei for answers, I still feel like, like, I remember, remember I had that theory that, uh, June was like a psychopath because of the whole bunny thing. Like, all, all the bunnies found dead when they were kids or whatever. I still feel like there's gotta be something with, uh, um, Junpei and... I, I talked to my friend about this and I just realized I don't think I ever talked about this in the video. But I, I still feel like there's going to be something between Junpei and June to tie them into this game, right? Or this, yeah, the Nonori game. Because we have Seven, who was a cop that was investigating this, right? We have Santa, who my theory is his little sister died nine years ago. That was when the last test happened. So I'm thinking that maybe the girl that uh, Clover talked about died is possibly Santa's sister. Uh, so that that gives Santa a reason for being in here, you know, like a, a connection to another event. Uh, we have Clover and uh, Snake, who are part of another experiment nine years ago. 
Um, and then Lotus, whose kid was part of one of the experiments. And then Ace, who was the one that orchestrated it. And the ninth man, who was connected to Ace somehow. Obviously, my theory was he was one of those uh, three names we got that... Um, one of the three names we got that we never found out more about. My theory was one of them was Ace, one of the, which we know for a fact. One of them was the ninth man, and then the other one was the man that died uh, in Snake's clothes. Were those were those names? But um, but anyway, that means everybody in this game has had some kind of connection to the experiment that happened nine years ago, except for Junpei and uh, Junpei and June. We yet to have any kind of connection. To them having anything to do with this other than that they have a connection with each other you know so um if if what we learned in the last ending that zero's doing this for some kind of revenge my curiosity is why is junpei and june here unless it's something we just haven't learned yet and why did why did he why did zero bring innocence theoretically innocence into this as far as we know like clover and uh like Clover and Snake, who were part of another experiment, right? Like, if they didn't do anything to hurt Zero, then why are they here? You know, if he's trying to get revenge, then why? Anyway, I just wanted to get that out because I realized that, like, I started talking about all that with one of my friends, um, and never actually said it here on the video, I don't think. I pieced together some of those theories on the video, though, but yeah. Anyway. Let's, uh, continue. Well, we got a little bit longer, actually, until, uh, the ending of this episode. The door slid heavily shut. Jinpei raised an eyebrow. Isn't it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number six. Yeah. But doesn't it say zero? This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. It's uh. a letter O. A letter oh. O? Whoa, wait a minute. I don't get it. I mean, Why, oh. we figured out that Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? Before Jumpy could answer, Snake spoke up. There is most likely only one person with a six. But I don't get it. Uh. What about June? Well, this is only an educated guess, but... She's zero. I think June's number was never six to begin with. What? How would... What? How would that work? How would she have made it through all the doors? Her bracelet was flipped. Oh, what? In other words... <gasps> she was the nine the whole time, and the nine is the number that can go through any door regardless of anything? June's real number is... Nine. Wait, but that would mean... But what about the, the ninth man? That would have meant he was six. So that still that would have still meant that there were two number six bracelets, right? Oh my god. That seems the most likely. Then all this number door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Yeah, they're gonna because talk about if June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't be. No, match nine up. nine is a, a universal number. Clover grabbed Junpei's notebook and began to write furiously Here, in it. Look. Junpei leaned over to look at it. list of all the numbered doors June's gone through. I'll let you know what I'm writing, okay, Snake? <laughs> yeah. But wait. And that's everything. I wrote down which door she went into and with whom. Right. And I wrote what all the numbers were. So if you switch nine and wherever there's a six, the if numbers. the digital root is seven, then you can't open door four. Wait, I thought... Am I stupid? I thought number nine they were saying was one that you can add to anything. The digital root is seven, you can't open... Yeah. If the digital root is two, then you can't open door eight. Clover, do you notice anything interesting on that list? What do you mean? You're talking about three, right? Three? Santa's always in the room with her. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Uh. 
Yes, that's right. What about it? That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question why? Hmm. Why would Santa do such a thing? The answer is easy. Because Santa can't open door 9 with only 7 and Lotus. Of course, there's only one reason for that. His number isn't actually 3. What? Santa's real number, 7? Would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. Devin took the pen from a confused clover and began to adjust her calculations. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? Uh... Hmm. Hmm. So he's the zero? He read all the changes he'd made when he finished. He looked at Snake. Snake smiled. Thank you. That is exactly right, Seven. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way! Shit. Santa is... zero? And June was nine, not six. So... Interesting? Then, would the... Then what... Uh, maybe they're gonna go over it, but... Then what about the... The very beginning, when the ninth man opened that door what did he and he went through by himself who did he use i can't remember but it probably works out conversely santa was zero not three then what about the ninth Plus man three and minus three they cancel one another out nothing appears out of order santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game this whole time precisely so you're saying Santa planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not. Uh. But I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero. Shit. If my hypothesis is correct. <laughs> Clover bit her lip. She seemed to be having some difficulty believing her brother's explanation. Junpei. Hmm. Junpei. Junpei remained silent in thought. Snake's hypothesis. Something doesn't seem right. Okay. I know this is kind of like a bad spot to stop, sort of, but I think this is going to be the end of the episode, guys. So we have the theory that Santa might be zero. I still don't know if that's, like, the true answer, but I will say, um, in that last ending that we had, we had we were holding June on the floor... Or, well, no, what was it? June was sick and left behind with Santa. And then June was in that room on the red carpet. And we don't know, we don't know, like, how she got there. And Santa was nowhere to be seen and they didn't mention him. And then that's when Junpei got gassed. And, you know, Santa was just gone. Where did Santa go? My theory, or I made, like, the, the quick little theory, like, maybe he's zero. And he took off and left, uh in order to have that conversation with Junpei in that last ending. Um, so, I mean, what if what if it's true? Maybe he is. But now I feel like we're finding out so... Well, it's not, I wouldn't say it's early in this ending, but if this ending is any kind of length of the other one, we still have, like, a ways to go, and we are just hearing this now. I don't know, but we do have to find out at some point, I feel like, who Zero is, or or something, but... I don't know. I don't know, guys, but it's interesting. Like... Would he... Would... Because, obviously, uh, Santa would have known, right? That's why he was so adamant about, like, protecting June and everything, was because he, he needed to go through all the same doors as June did. Um, but, so he must have somehow knew that he wasn't three. Interesting. I don't know. Like, if he's not zero, then I wonder how they'd explain that away, of, like, him knowing, or 
you know, maybe he didn't know. I guess I guess I'm assuming that he knew based off the idea that he went through every room with June and, you know, tried to uh tried to protect her or whatever, right? What'd he say? Doopa doopa doo doopa doopa doo doopa doopa doo Um Where was it? Um Was it Yeah, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Which I mean that could just be Santa being a good person, you know? But so I guess that's not like just because we have that doesn't mean that Santa is legit like zero or something, you know. I don't know. But it feels like he would have like I and I well I guess what I'm trying to say is just because Santa like refused to leave June behind doesn't mean that he knew that he had a different bracelet number, you know. Anyway, my mind is racing, though. I have no idea. I am super excited to continue with this story now, but I think that's probably going to be it for me, guys. I'm, yeah, I'm just excited. <laughs> so, uh, sorry for the long beginning of me trying to work out um, getting to this ending and everything, but I just like, uh, like going through my thought process at the start of the video and, and everything. Hopefully none of you got too bored by... Uh, by me going over that and everything. Um, but I wasn't able to come up with much of a theory as to what I had to do. I mean, I guess there wasn't much to come up with anyway. Like, um, I could have came up to, like, what ending I had to go to, you know? But the, uh... I, I guess I just didn't expect the, the coffin ending to just start continuing on for the true ending, you know? And just add things to the flowchart, you know? Um, it might be cheating, but if we look at the flowchart... Oh my god. We haven't even touched this ending yet. Oh good lord. Okay, guys. Yep, that's gonna be it from me. We have a, we have a ways to go on this, so I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!